bar, if you will. But the other was uh, the last show that we did, which was about the first Chinese balloon, the one that got shot down over South Carolina, was posted for no more than two hours before we shot another one down in Alaska. And the next day we shot another one down in um, in Canada. And the next day we shot one down over Lake Huron. So basically we thought this seems to be a fluid situation and maybe it would be good for us to be ready to talk to people and to ourselves. So right now um, I'm hearing something else. This is live. I don't know where it's coming from, but I'm going to stop it. I'm getting rid of it. Okay. Let me bring in Ross Coltart out of uh, Sydney. Ross, I hope you are suffering fewer technical issues than I am right now. How you doing, mate? I'm good. I'm very good. And boy, what a couple of weeks, Bryce. This has been absolutely extraordinary. Okay. So let's let's quickly explain what's going on. Yes. We know that on the 4th of February, a Chinese spy balloon was downed at 60,000 feet. We know that a car-sized object was downed near Dead Horse, Alaska on the 10th of February at 40,000 feet. We know that a cylindrical object was downed in the Yukon on, in Alaska on the 11th of February, also at 40,000 feet. There's talk of a, a metal payload seen hanging from that object. And then fourth, we, we've t we're told that an octagon-shaped object was downed over Lake Huron in the United States near the Great Lakes on the 13th of February at 20,000 feet. This is the first time in NORAD's 65-year history that the United States has ever brought down an object over US airspace with military weaponry. It's, it's a historic moment. It's also the first time, frankly, Bryce, that I've heard the White House press secretary using the word alien, oh. responding to an absolute avalanche of media questions about what this is. And I, I have to say the general theme of my comments today are going to be that the Pentagon and the White House's response to this whole issue are illogical, nonsensical, and catastrophic in terms of media messaging. Yeah. There is something seriously wrong with what's going on at the moment. I don't disagree with you at all. And actually, when I saw the White House uh, press secretary using the word alien and extraterrestrial, I thought, you know, how did I get onto HBO? I, it looks like I'm watching Independence Day or something. Uh, it was shocking to say the least. And I think the interesting thing that I want to just point out where we stand today as we do this live is that the media, in some respects, has just moved on. I was looking at NPR and they had 21 stories that were laid out on their homepage and not one of them, not one of them had anything to do when I looked at it uh, with uh, the shoot downs. The other okay, thing well, is- but, but, but I'll just respond to that quickly. Yeah, yeah. It may be that the media are trying to take this off the agenda, but boy, I, I can tell you just from the volume of interest and the comments that we're right. already getting on site here, I, just the, I've never, ever in my career in journalism have had a response such as what we're having at the moment. Every morning for the last week, I've been waking up to hundreds of new emails literally in some cases, thousands of new messages. It is absolutely extraordinary because the public clearly do not buy the legacy media line and for good reason. Uh, it's really important that, that we keep the pressure up, Bryce, because frankly, there's something that doesn't make sense about all of this. I'll, I'll let you finish the point you were about well, to make. I was just going to say, so then I started, you know, looking at, at some of the other stuff and we can come back to our media hits and airs later and we should, but I, it was interesting that as the government more and more said, well, doesn't look like anything, maybe it's Chinese might be something else, but you know, nothing to see here folks. The coverage seemed to think that everybody who was interested in UAP accuracy or revelation or anything would be disconsolate. Oh, my God, they're not ETs. But I don't think I knew very many people who actually thought that these that we were shooting down were ETs. I think the bigger problem and the one I want to uh, highlight today is if you look at the number of UAP that have been looked at by our own government in the past years as we put out these reports, uh, those UAP were not slow, 
high flying objects. They were actually craft that were flying at much higher speeds uh, and at much lower elevation and in close proximity to our military maneuvers. So we're not, we're, these are apples and oranges. So uh, having said that, let's go back into these, these Chinese balloons and, and or whatever else they are and, and try to dissect that. Okay, let's get one thing off the top first. There is a very deliberate strategy, I think, coming from the Pentagon to try to conflate what these probable balloons or drones were or are that were shot down with the broader issue of unidentified aerial phenomena that have been recorded by military pilots, civilian pilots, and other sightings witnesses for many, many years, going back decades. It's a deliberate conflation, and I think what they're doing is they're opportunistically trying to muddy the waters to leave the general public that's sadly not so well informed uh, with the impression that, yes, in the long run, the general explanation for all of these things is going to be that these are foreign incursions, probably by state actors sending balloons, or maybe they're a stray weather balloon. But don't you worry your tiny little heads, we've got this thing under control. Now, the big thing from this whole week is that the White House is not in control anymore of the narrative, and neither is the Pentagon. The public want answers. They're not buying the official explanation. I've just been watching a video earlier on this morning from a guy who purports to be near one of the Alaska sightings areas. He says he's as close as he can possibly get to where the object must have been downed. And what you see is a featureless expanse of white ice and snow. And he says there's been no aerial activity over that area for the past few days. If someone's doing a search, they're not doing it over the area where the fighter jets were known to bring this object down. I think there does need to be a very rigorous questioning of the White House and of the Pentagon. The other thing that's happened, Bryce, is that there was an announcement that I think has largely been overlooked by a lot of people, that the Biden administration, the executive arm of government, has announced from the White House the creation of an interagency team, including officials from the Pentagon, the Federal Aviation Administration, the Department of Homeland Security, and other parts of the executive branch. And it's to be headed by the National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan. Now, this is significant. This matters, and it matters for reasons I don't think people yet understand. I am told, and I can't go into a lot of detail, but I am told that there is significant difference between the White House and sections of the military command in the Pentagon, notably the US Air Force and NORAD, over what the position is to be about this issue. Everybody, I, th I notice a lot of the congressmen and senators have been saying that Arrow, um, the uh, Pentagon's UFO UAP investigation organization headed by Sean Kirkpatrick ought properly to be running investigations into this issue. But people are missing the point. The White House has appointed its political secu national security representative, Jake Sullivan, to look at this issue. Why? Ask yourselves, why has it done that? Why, for example, did the National Security Council spokesman, uh, Jake Kirby, earlier in the week, directly contradict the Pentagon and NORAD when NORAD far too quickly jumped up and down and said, we know what these things are. Major Olivier Gallant from NORAD pompously announced that we know what these things are. And then he clammed up and said, we're not going to tell you what they are. But it's quite clear from the background briefings given to cozy little chats with the legacy media, such as the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal, it's quite clear that the Pentagon wants this issue to go away. They've definitively said, yes, these are balloons. More importantly, the press is now being briefed that most, and in fact, in a briefing to the governors yesterday, um, the governors around America were told that the vast majority of these unidentified aerial phenomena that have been detected in our airspace going back years will turn out to be clutter such as balloons, such as the ones that have been shot down over the US. This is a massive red herring, I'm told. And I don't think the White House is buying this narrative. Joe Biden is under pressure like a president has never been before 
to tell the truth about what the government knows, not just about these balloon shootdowns, but more importantly, about what the Pentagon and the government knows, what the government has been briefed about these unidentified aerial phenomena that we now know from senators walking out of a briefing yesterday has been seen for decades. As um, uh, that colourful that colourful character John Kennedy from, I think he's uh, uh, come out of one of the briefings right. and he from said... Uh, Senator the, from Louisiana. Right. Yeah, he came, he said, the cow is out of the barn. <laughs> now, <laughs> Bryce, where I come from, a lot of people think the cow is out of the barn means that your zipper is halfway undone. So uh, I, I took a bit of, I did a bit of Googling to figure out what the Honourable Senator was referring to, but I presume he means that the story is out and can't be put back in the box. The, and the, uh, that's interesting. The kangaroo is out on the road. Uh, who, who knows? Uh, listen, you, you raise a lot of great questions and you're a great reporter to be thinking of all of them. And I look forward to the day when people who are in those White House briefings and congressional briefings have the stones to ask some of them out loud. I also look forward to the time when uh, we can get our need to know chops into those meetings and start asking them because they obviously need to be talked about. It is interesting. I'm hearing the same thing that you are hearing. I mean, let's face it, to be caught unawares by this is really kind of a bizarre uh, attitude to have because, first of all, there's been 80 years of this stuff, so there was ample time to get a response together. But also, uh, this this has been happening in, in such a time frame that over the last five years, people have been talking about UAP as we have documented in 20, 28 previous episodes to this. So I don't know why they would be necessarily uh, caught, you know, out of uh, out of that. And in fact, you're right. The White House has kind of lost control of the narrative, but partly because they never got out front of it. They sent uh, they sent press secretaries out and some generals, but clearly the nation wanted to hear from the president. And I think it will probably go down in history as a mistake on Biden's part not to have gotten out in front of it. I understand, though, that he is expected to speak. They were a little unclear about what date that would be, but no later than the 20th, they said. But I'm thinking to myself, the 20th? Come on, how about three days ago uh, at the very least? But I will say this. Um, I'm in favor of Biden being as honest as he possibly can. Um, I wrote a bunch of articles for this Trail of the Saucers uh, publication on Medium last year. One of them was a speech that I had written for Biden that he should give when the first report came out. Now, of course, he didn't give that speech um, because it it talked about UAP and, and, and the reality of UAP. And I think he should do it this time. I mean, I think he's got the perfect opportunity. I don't think he'll he'll do that. Now, a uh, final uh, conclusion about that. Um, a lot of people are preparing to be disappointed. They're preparing to say, well, if they're going to dismiss the whole thing as Chinese satellites or, or rather balloons or uh, other surveillance equipment, then I guess that's the end of it. We don't have to, to look any further. But I think what's interesting is I heard over the weekend Chuck Schumer, uh, who is the majority leader of the Senate, saying that he thought there should be some kind of bipartisan commission. You were just talking about what they are doing. And I, here's the thing. You can't contain the truth once you start looking for it. So if you do have congressional hearings of any kind, uh, the first thing you're going to start looking for is, well, what's the China angle? What's the Russia angle? What, Who's doing this? But the more you look for that, the more you're going to find exotic technology out there. And so this might be the path that people have been wondering about for years, how we get to disclosure of, of some kind of truth. Now, I think we need to just go back retrospectively and look and listen to what has been said officially by the Defence Department. This isn't idle speculation. The thing that sticks out to me is that very early on in this saga of the shoot down of these three, three still unidentified objects, it was the US military commander for North America, General Glenn Van Herc, who said, I am not able to categorize how these objects stay aloft. It could be a gaseous type of balloon inside a structure or it could be some type of propulsion system. And then he was asked by a journalist whether he'd ruled out, isn't it so nice of the media to suggest that it can't possibly be extraterrestrials, whether he'd ruled out the UFOs were operated by extraterrestrials. And Van Herc 
quite correctly responded, I haven't ruled out anything at this point. Now, what's interesting is at this point, newspapers started reporting that it wasn't aliens, it wasn't extraterrestrials. And nobody, I'm not suggesting that it is aliens or extraterrestrials. But what's fascinating is that somebody was pumping the narrative. Bryce, I've spoken to two journalists on major newspaper or television organizations in the United States who tell me that the briefings to media suggesting that there was something anomalous about these objects came from senior defense sources. They won't tell me who those sources are, but there were defense sources suggesting that there was something anomalous about these objects. And if you remember, there was an article uh, that was featured in a lot of media quite early on, suggesting that one of these objects had meddled with the weapons sensor systems of one of these jet aircraft. And I've noticed that uh, Chris Mellon, in his statement that was published 23 hours ago, um, he, he's actually picked up on this issue and he attaches significance to it. He suggests that it is concerning that the object that reportedly interfered with US fighters over Alaska is highly unusual and may prove to be a Chinese or Russian electronic warfare or spy platform. And then he goes on to say, well, perhaps, albeit highly unlikely, a probe placed by an alien species. Almost, although most UAP likely have conventional explanations, some demonstrate capabilities that seem inexplicable without reference to a more advanced nation or civilization. Now, again, we're not suggesting that these balloons that showed allegedly, according to unnamed defense officials, are alien, but they certainly displayed anomalous features. And now the Pentagon and the White House are walking back at 100 miles an hour from those comments about which they were briefing the media. And I think we have to ask, we shouldn't just let this go like the mainstream media so regularly does. We shouldn't let go of the fact that it wasn't the, the tinfoil hat UFO fringe sections of the UFO social media that were making these claims. It was senior defense officials that were suggesting that these objects were anomalous and that somehow they were able to remotely interfere with the weapons sensor systems of a highly sophisticated fighter jet. Don't let go of that. Why on earth was somebody in the defense department promoting such an idea? I'd like to know what your take on that is. And, uh, I mean, let's face it, they shouldn't be briefing something they don't believe in. So if they're even opening that door a little bit, there must be motive and motivation for that. What's your take? What, why? Well, I mean, the thing I find amusing about all of this is I'm worrying, I'm worried that we're all being set up. I'm worried that this is almost like they've, they've basically gone, it's all about aliens. You know, they've basically had General Van... Um, General Glenn Van Herc basically saying, look, I can't rule out aliens. There's been private briefings suggesting that it might be in some way anomalous, that it represents a technology that's able to do things to modern fighter jets that, that is concerning to national security officials. And then all of a sudden, once they've promoted that idea, they start walking back from it. I, I don't think what I'm very, very sure of, Bryce, is we are not getting the full story. And there's a few things that we need to drill in on, because in my line of work, what you do is you try and avoid the clutter and you stick to what you know. Now, what we know is that there is vision. There is FLIR forward-looking infrared vision. There is probably gun camera vision from the deployment of the Sidewinder missile. And there may indeed be other optics that we don't know about on those aircraft that vision needs to be released. Now, we know, because uh, Senator Marco Rubio talked about this yesterday, there is palpable anger among a lot of the senators and congressmen that have been briefed on this issue that they're not being given the full story. And it's frankly incumbent on people who are concerned about this issue, because it's not going to happen in legacy media, to press for their congressional representatives to keep on asking questions. You, the citizen, are more powerful than you realize. It's worth your while to get on the blower, get on the phone and ring your senator or your congressperson and basically let them know that you want these questions asked. 
the video material. Did you see that buck pass when there was a question asked at the White House press conference? Or maybe it was General, I can't remember who it was, but I think it was Jake Kirby, the National Security Council spokesperson, was asked about video. And he implicitly acknowledged that there is video, but said you'll have to ask the Department of Defence about that. Uh, that is a buck pass. Boy, I'll the say White, The White House needs to release this vision now. If it's just balloons, if the Pentagon has, as it has smugly been asserting to the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, Fox News, ABC, CNN, if it's been telling all these media on background so that it's not attributed to them directly, that these are balloons, don't you worry your tiny little heads, we're on top of this issue. They need to release the evidence. And the only evidence we have thus far is what the pilots have said. And frankly, what the pilots have said is very, very inconclusive. Uh, the audio has leaked. And in one of the incidents, the pilots are saying, in the targeting pod, I can't tell if it's metallic or what, but I can see like lines coming down below it. I can't see anything below it. You can definitely see strings below, but I don't see anything hanging below. So this is essentially painting a picture of perhaps something balloon-like in the sense that there's a larger structure with strings hanging down. Um, there's a suggestion that the object was metallic black in the radio call and that it was shiny enough to reflect the sun, so perhaps metallic. And then one of the pilots says, "Looking, it's, it's like blackish. I'm going to call it like a container. Can't really tell, though, what the shape is. I've got a tone, he says, indicating that the missile's locked on. And he has a good track, but he can't see through the glare of the cockpit. It looks dark. Does that <laughs> sound like a, a container? Not, I mean, not really. Could, What's this? And then, where, and then, and then just to, finish, just to yeah. finish the point, General Van uh, Herk also said at one stage that if it was a balloon, it was a balloon with some kind of structure inside of it. Right. Now, I, I, all of these inconsistencies and apparent contradictions – do we just meekly go, oh, it's the Pentagon. They wouldn't lie to us. No, good <laughs> heavens, we, we, don't. we wouldn't get misled. I, look, frankly, if people don't want to know, if they really can't be bothered, just go back to your lives, just get on with your lives and meekly accept the fact that the mainstream media isn't going to ask more questions about this. But you guys who are listening, you, you've got to rock the boat and, and ask, get your congressional representatives wound up about this because they already are wound up about this. Oh, They're yeah. very, very concerned that this is a national security threat. These incursions of these objects, as John Kennedy said, these objects have been flying over us for years many years. We've known about these objects for years. We're not sure what we've known about, that we've known about all of them, except for the Chinese spy balloon. We don't know what they are. That's what Senator John Kennedy yeah. said after he walked out of the briefing to senators on Tuesday the 14th, yesterday America time. Now, why is it that you've got pompous, unnamed people from the Pentagon talking to their tame friends in mainstream media saying, yes, we know what these are. Don't you worry. They're just balloons. You know, we're on top of things, guys. And then you've got senators being told in a private briefing, we don't know we don't what know. they are. Think, uh, guys. Ask questions. Yes, sir. Well, first of all, I was alive during Vietnam, so um, – I know better than to trust the Pentagon when it tells us things without questions. Uh, just a couple of quick things for people who are watching us in real time here. Uh, Ross, I think you meant instead of a, a, a structure inside a balloon, it's a balloon inside a structure, maybe. I'm sorry, you're quite right. Yeah, you're and, right. And the, the other thing, for folks who don't live in Australia, where you guys call videotape vision, um, I don't think, I, correct, we would call it, I guess, videotape or, or whatever, but I don't think a lot of people know that's what you mean. So by vision, what Ross is talking about is that uh, all of these intercepts to go look and see what was there, uh, they don't exist out of nowhere. They're on tape, and uh, those can be allowed to be seen. What's interesting is whether they'll let us see the whole thing. Remember those uh, first three videos that were released back in 2017, 20, uh, in 2017 were just little clips and we still never have seen the entire, uh, the entire thing. And we probably should get a chance to look at what 
everyone's talking about. I think a, a picture is worth a thousand words, and it would be nice to, to, to do that. When we talk about lines coming off things, by the way, uh, in a way that is reminiscent of the Tic Tac, where they had the people who described it up close thought there were were things trailing off it. So, you know, I'm, I don't know exactly what that means. I don't know exactly what those are. But um, I, I think the thing that has disturbed me most about sort of just following the story, because like a lot of you, I've sort of let this thing just wash over me, you know? Okay, I'll go on the internet, I'll read their stories, then I'll go downstairs and watch the TV and I'll go between Fox and MSNBC and CNN and all these other places and listen to how people are covering it. And, you know, I got to tell you, it hasn't been the media's finest moment. Some of their reporting has been, been good. But I think the big mistake here has been that, that the sense that if these not are not exotic or uh, otherwise anomalous, then the media feels like, well, the story's over. Now it's just looking into what China's doing, and that's the real story. What they're ignoring is the literal hundreds and thousands of things far more advanced technologically that we have encountered through our own pilots and through our own eyes. Um, I just want to follow up on what you were talking about, Ross, about, uh, I, I, you know, look, we're both in the media. We're not here just to trash the media every episode, but I do think there are, this is a time when it wouldn't be bad for the media to have some kind of memory. I mean, I just wrote down a few things. There were so many. There were so many things where I had to tear my fist out of the ceiling uh, watching it. Uh, one of them was I read an article by Jackie Waddles of CNN, and she began the article by saying, many people have questioned whether extraterrestrial activity is afoot. The short answer, no, there is not. So the whole point is to, to say it doesn't explain these four and therefore there's no other issue. If she knew anything about the UAP issue, she would know that at, that is a very facetious way to begin. Erin Burnett, also on CNN, uh, one of the anchors, she said just casually in one of uh, her interviews, Congress held UAP hearings a couple of years ago. She just tossed that off. Well, as most of the people who are listening to this know, those hearings were last year in May. Uh, that's like 10 months ago. So, you know, if Erin Burnett knew anything about this topic, she'd know when that happened. And she'd also be able to put this UAP issue into context that it's not just about that. So I'd ask her, do you know what happened? Uh, you know, uh, 10 in that hearing? Uh, do you know who testified? Do you know why the hearing only went one day? I bet she doesn't. Then I read another article and I didn't write down who wrote this because I really wish I had because it really infuriated me. The first sentence started, you can put away your tinfoil hats. Okay, I'm sorry. We could have retired that 50 years ago. I, you know, people are not running around in tinfoil hats and the people that Ross and I know through our program here are by and large, very, very intelligent, well-informed people like those of you who are watching and listening right now. So I, I, I don't think that's reasonable. The LA Times uh, clearly made the assumption, uh, uh, Corinne Pertil of the LA Times made the false assumption that an exotic or anomalous piece of technology automatically means alien. So I will explain it to you people in the media one more time. Nobody is saying that. We're not saying we know exactly who is responsible for it, but Chinese balloons and weather balloons does not explain all these anomalous reports. And, um, okay, that's my soapbox uh, for the media <laughs> hall of shame. For right now. I, get, I get so frustrated, and I'm sure you do too. But my question is, do you think the Australian media has covered this any differently than our U.S. media? It's funny. I, I do detect a turn. Uh, the, the, there is the beginning of an impatience in the Australian media with the way that the uh, government in my country has its head in the sand. Because whilst in America, your government has acknowledged that there is a reality, that there is a genuine mystery involving unidentified anomalous phenomena, in my country, they really, truly just try and ignore it. And I've got this ridiculous situation. I went on national television here yesterday and did an interview 
on Sky News, uh, which is one of the big news networks here in Australia. And I said, look, I, I know for a fact because I'm talking to pilots all the time who tell me that they're seeing these objects and they're getting the messaging from the Air Force and the Defence Force of this country that they don't want to know about it. And so they're actually coming to me. They're talking to me privately. And indeed, in some cases, some of them have reported them on to American organisations like MUFON because they, they don't know where to go. And the messaging is, don't talk to us about it. We don't want to know about it. Now, Bryce, the, the thing that I want to emphasize, I'm going to drop a massive hint here. There's something I know. There is major dissent. I'm going to say it again. There is major dissent between the Biden White House and the Pentagon right now about the failure by different agencies in the military to tell the truth. And I just want to point you all to some statements that um, Christopher Mellon, in his yeah. recent statement, released 24 hours ago. Chris Mellon basically says that um, at the time of the 2004 Nimitz incident, US Air Force F-22s were operating in the same training areas as the Navy Avia. Navy aviators who were seeing and reporting these objects. Yet, despite having superior sensor systems, these US Air Force pilots did not report the UAP that must have been detected by their radars. And he actually goes on to say the preliminary assessment provided to Congress was almost completely devoid of information from the US Air Force despite the fact that the Air Force has far more aircraft and sensor systems than the Navy, as well as the responsibility for supporting NORAD. It is my understanding that NORAD did not include in the ODNI report any of the thousands of uncorrelated targets that its radars identify each year over North America. And he goes on to make the point that, yes, yeah, sure, a lot of those uncorrelated targets might be clutter. But the point is, there's two issues that come out of what we now know. One, you have a former Deputy Assistant Undersecretary of Defence, from Chris Mellon, saying, flatly accusing the Air Force of essentially being uncooperative. And he actually goes on to say there are more serious cases that the Air Force did not report including, it now seems, cases where US and or Canadian Air Forces scrambled fighter jets to intercept UAP. This is an allegation from a former very senior defence official who is saying the US Air Force is being uncooperative. Now, roll forward from the context of what he's talking about there, which is a broad range of incidents over the roughly 20 years since 2004. The, the clear messaging that is coming through, the contradictions are coming from, drumroll, largely the US Air Force, Yes, NORAD. You had Major Olivier Gallant, the spokesman for NORAD, saying, declaring on Sunday, very shortly after the shootdown, we know what these objects are. The arrogance of NORAD the arrogance of the US Air Force that subsequently the public were told they're not allowed to know why the US Air Force knows what it knows. Now, if it's as simple as they have sensor systems that they don't want to reveal the capacities of, then they can explain that. If the reason why they don't want to show the videos, the gun sight videos, is purely and simply because they don't want to reveal capabilities, they must explain that. Yeah. But the thing that strikes me as interesting here is there is a regular theme running through all of this messaging, including from good people like Chris Mellon. The US Air Force is deliberately subverting the public's right to know. He's calling out the US Air Force in his article. And it's interesting because the same thing's happening with my Air Force here in Australia. You have the Chief of Air Staff for the Royal Australian Air Force telling the Parliament things that um, uh, I think might be coming into question in, in coming weeks. But I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Listen, um, I heard your uh, interview on Sky and um, I thought it was excellent. Uh, I, I'd expect nothing less. But what I thought was particularly excellent is that Sky would have somebody on like yourself who actually understands something about this issue of UAP. And I did notice over much of my television viewing over the weekend that many of the people who kept break, getting brought onto these panels 
they knew something about China. Maybe they knew something about the military, but they seemed to be incredibly ignorant about the connection that UAP might have to the overall picture. Because, you know, you talked about uh, Chris Mellon, who's a big friend of the show, and we're we're really uh, happy to have him talking uh, to us. Uh, you know, he and uh, L Lieutenant Ryan Graves, uh, who is one of the uh, pilots, you know, they have made it clear that pilots are sometimes encountering these things every single day. Um, I, in fact, on one Navy ship, I believe the aviator's ready room literally had um, – uh, uh, some kind of sign that said there was a potential for mid-air collisions and the government's own reports have shown about 11 cases of uh, potential mid-air collisions. So yeah, they need to get experts on who can probably talk about some of that. Um, the other thing is though, uh, you make a great point. Uh, the army versus the, excuse me, the air force versus the Navy is not a football game in the United States or Australia. Uh, but it is something that seems to be going on historically and has picked up in steam. Uh, obviously, at the beginning of the UFO issue, when it began in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, it all fell to the Air Force. I think the thinking was, well, if they're up there, then the Air Force should take a look at it. And the Air Force had uh, very mixed results on that. They, they were not given a lot of credit for really digging into it, and they were given some of the blame for diverting some of the better cases, not to Project Blue Book, but somewhere else up the chain of command. So the truth of the matter is, um, we even covered it. We did an entire show. If you people want to go to the U YouTube page, you'll see that show where we talked about uh, the Air Force versus the Navy and why historically they may be behaving that way. But clearly, now is the time uh, for the Air Force to get with the program because Congress is pissed off and or at least some influential people in Congress are and they want answers and they want this uh, detailed before them. So um, they're going to get them, I think, one way or the other, uh, whether those answers will be gotten in classified meetings or uh, in an unclassified public arena uh, to be worked out. But I guess, Ross, as I sat there and uh, and again, let this wash over me, it was so strange as a news story. I say this as an observer of the news and also someone who spent a lot of his career covering news. It was so bizarre. We did an episode where we thought we were as current as we could be with the uh, Chinese balloon. And then boom, boom, boom. One per day for three days, we shoot down another UAP. Now, whether they're Chinese, Russian, or a player to be named later, or exotic and anomalous, that's still being sorted out. But my question uh, that I think we might want to ask, because I see uh, people uh, who are making comments on, on this show uh, seem to have this on their mind. Why? Why, if you go 80-some years and don't actually talk about shooting anything down, why now? Why do you think it was now? Why did they do it? That's a very good question. Can I just quickly yeah. emphasize a point? You've talked about the clash between the Navy, the US Navy, and the US Air Force. I've made the point that the US Air Force is accused flatly by a former very senior defense official in an article 24 hours ago of essentially obstructing the public's right to know, of hindering UFO, UAP transparency. I'll go further. Is the White House interagency panel a response to something that the US Navy at a very high level has come to the White House about? Mm. Is there dissent between the US Air Force and the US Navy at a very high command level such that possibly a senior commander of the US Navy has gone to the Biden White House and told them something? You have that. couched that in a very specific incredible way as a question that's, that's are you hearing are you telling you you so are what hearing. would you do if you were the white house and you learned that the pentagon is being obstructive not just on this whole balloon saga which yeah. i think is a big red herring but on the broader issue of proper investigation into an unidentified aerial phenomenon if you were to learn as now is official this is the scandal behind all of this if you're jake sullivan the um the National Security Advisor in the White House, and you learn that the US Air Force has not been telling the President about these objects over US airspace, 
supposedly because, and I say supposedly because I'm not sure I quite believe it, they turned down the sensitivity of their radar systems so much that they weren't seeing these objects. You would be furious that your Air Force, which is tasked with the protection of the airspace of North America, would would be doing such a thing to effectively make America blind to threats. And, and I read somewhere earlier in the week that somebody said this is a 9-11 moment. Yeah. It is. If you go back to the 9-11 commission, what did it reveal? It revealed that there were sections of the US intelligence and defense community who were compartmentalizing information that needed to be shared in order to protect Americans from a national security threat of global Islamist terrorism. In this case, what is it, some 22 years later, we have a situation where it turns out the Air Force has probably known for years about these incursions across American airspace, but it hasn't been telling it's president. And if yes. you were the president, you would be pissed. I would now, just be livid. Yeah. Now, just imagine, what if the US Navy has also become aware of something about the US Air Force? And what if the US Navy was to go to the Biden White House and say, we don't believe the US Air Force has been properly candid with you, Mr. President? That is where I think we're at at the moment. I don't care yeah. if you're from Australia or the United States. That is still what is called a game changer, if that happens. That is a shocking thing. And by, way, by the way, it was our friend Chris Mellon who mentioned that, uh, what you were talking about, about 9-11. In that article he posted up a day ago, he thought that the, the, the obvious lack of getting this right uh, in the last week uh, will probably go down in history like 9-11 as you mentioned, but also Pearl Harbor. In other words, there's a security threat. Some of us know about it, but we don't respond to it. Uh, that is literally uh, not doing your job. Now, one of the things that I thought uh, as I was listening to you talk is that, yeah, well, it's not impossible what you're suggesting and that, that you're hearing because uh, remember the NDAA, which is the National Defense Authorization Act, which uh, you know people on the show understand was passed last year by the House and the Senate and signed by Biden on December 23rd, a couple of days before Christmas. That makes it so much easier to start getting the truth out. I'll give you a quick highlight of some of the things that NDA does, and you'll NDAA does, and you'll understand. Um, among the things it does, it provides greatly enhanced authorities and resources for this program they've set up, Arrow, which is the all-domain anomaly office, res anomaly resolution office. The second thing it does, it, it mandates a review of all intelligence documents involving UAP from 1945 to the present. Uh, the third thing it does is it asks to be uh, looked into to identify any non-disclosure agreements related to UAP. And then the whopper is it directs, uh, well, no, then it also directs the new Aero Office to develop a science plan. The whopper though, for what you're saying is, it provides a secure process for anyone who has signed an official US government secrecy agreement related to UAP to come forward and reveal that information to Aero and to Congress, regardless of the level of classification and without fear of retribution and prosecution. So yeah, if people are up in arms about what they've been seeing in the last week, how it's been handled and wanna know what the truth is, there's a whole army of whistleblowers that are being talked to right now in our, in our country. So I think it is possible, um, it's more than possible. It's it's probable that something like what you just described is happening, whether they've got in to talk to the White House. I doubt they got into the president, but he certainly must know about it now. Yeah. So, I mean, I just re-emphasize to our audience, I think the key takeaway for me on this is the U.S. Air Force has been caught tricking down the radar sensitivity in a way that Chris Mellon and others were warning about. I mean, Lou Elizondo went public about this and resigned from his role in the Pentagon because he said that certain individuals in the Pentagon remained staunchly opposed to further research on what he said years ago could be a tactical threat to our pilots, sailors, soldiers, and perhaps even an existential threat to our national security. That was a warning that Lou Elizondo wrote when he left the Pentagon in November of right. uh, 2017. And here we are, what is it, six years later, six years later, 
and it's come true. Chris Mellon saying the same thing. I'll, These I'll guys, look, are, it's, it's five and change. Let's not be too hard on them. Oh, five. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> five and change. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, the thing that fascinates me is I think, and I'm hearing this, things are starting to crack. Yes. There has been a, un, a unanimity presented publicly from the Pentagon that both the US Air Force and the US Navy are in lockstep on this issue. But what if you are a senior US Navy commander and you become aware of things that the US Air Force is concealing criminally, improperly, illegally? I'll say that again. What if you become aware as a senior commander in the US Navy that crimes are being committed? Now, I personally think that anybody that is responsible for such crimes should be publicly excoriated, named and shamed. But maybe the political arm of your government might take a more cautious view. Maybe they might announce ooh, an inter-agency task force to review what is known about this issue. A political body, because they no longer trust the Pentagon to do the research and the investigations that they think are necessary. That is what I think is significant out of Monday's announcement from the White House. Your, your what if does have, I mean, you answered your own what if, but I'll take it one step further. If that is true, as you said, what are your options? Well, option one is heads are going to roll and there may be prosecutions. I mean, that's what happens if you do illegal acts and uh, you are found to have done it, you're supposed to be prosecuted. The only other option would be the president could step in and offer a pardon to people, uh, perhaps in exchange for testimony, perhaps not. Those are really the, the the basic options, you know, but as I was, I just have to say, that is a good, solid piece of information you've heard. Um, it doesn't sound out of the realm of possibility, but I think there are so many moving parts right now that this thing is so fluid that it could go any direction. Now, uh, I get more or at least better emails and phone calls since we've started doing this show. And I got the sense from a couple of them that there is a sense also that the United States is almost in a truth race with a couple of other countries, that there are other countries that are supposedly thinking about being a little more forthcoming uh, than they have been. Uh, I don't have the names of them or, uh, you know, right now, but I hear that that is being talked about by some of these same people. So we are in a place where it, it, you, you could not be blamed for thinking it's a little confusing because on one hand you are being told, Hey, looks like we have a problem with Chinese surveillance. We better get that taken care of. So that's the one thing. But the other is you say, well, wait a minute. You can't use Chinese balloons or intelligence and surveillance uh, from any country to explain all of the UAP that we have been getting since 1947 forward. So we are in a period where uh, I, I wouldn't have predicted this. You know, I wrote a book uh, with Richard Dolan called AD After Disclosure, where we tried to come up with every scenario imaginable about how this whole, uh, what Steve Bassett calls is the truth embargo could could break down. And I got to tell you, the idea that we would shoot down four uh, UAP in a single week, that, that, that didn't actually make it into our book because it seemed kind of improbable. And yet here we are. So uh, I guess my takeaway from this week is there's way more here than meets the eye right now. Uh, I don't need them to be alien craft to think that we are going to start getting uh, some exciting times where people are looking for the truth in a more aggressive way than they have in the past. And I kind of look forward to it because uh, this is an issue that has long been kicked down the road by the Pentagon, by the Congress, by the people, by the media. And uh, this last week has proved one thing. Uh, there is an interest in the topic, but more than that, there is a demand for answers. And I know you want them, Ross, and I want them too. And I'm assuming everybody who's listening to us wants them. So now, as they say, let the games begin. Now, let's remind people before we go that there is a separate issue from these three balloons, which I, I do emphasize will probably turn out to be benign. It's quite clear that the US Air Force knows 
quite a lot about them, even though they haven't been able to recover them, and I don't think they're looking too hard for them, I suspect that it is going to turn out that they're quite benign. I think what they're worried about is being embarrassed in that if they reveal that the debris is just some weather balloon or something like that, then they're going to be accused by their opposition of of having overreacted and of having deployed missiles over US airspace in a way that was completely unwarranted. And I think what they're all hoping is to be able to dampen this issue down and, and let it all go away. And they're playing the media at the moment, giving them the impression, especially in the briefings to governors, that all of these UAPs are going to be explained away as such clutter. Now, we know from the preliminary um, report to, for, to the DNI, from the DNI on the UAP issue that was tendered in uh, June of 2021 to the Congress, there were 143 military UAP incidents since 2004, validated by multiple sources. And more importantly, in the more recent report that's come down, when the House Intelligence Committee held a public hearing on the UAP issue last May, the number of official UAP reports had climbed to 400. And then more recently, the Office of the Director of National Intelligence submitted a new unclassified report that shows a hundred and that it had classified 195 out of a 510 UAP incidents. So the residual number of unexplained UAPs remains in excess of 300. And that doesn't include NORAD. And, and, and frankly, Ross, you and I both know, and so does everyone listening, that the actual reporting of UFOs slash UAP is always has always been far lower than than what people see. In other words, the average person, if they see a UFO, often don't even tell their family. They certainly don't tell their friends. They don't go to school or work and and tell everybody about it. That may be changing a little bit. But more than that, our military over the years has not been very good at encouraging people to come forward. And that is starting to, to change a, a, a little bit. So, um, you know, I, I just wanted to go back as we close up here and remind people of what uh, a, a couple of points that Chris Mellon had made. He concluded that article by saying, the good news is that awareness is rising regarding the UAP issue, and we have not yet suffered any acts of kinetic aggression or hostility from UAP. The public should be more relieved than alarmed as we are finally taking the steps to more effectively defend and control U.S. airspace. If one or more of these UAP ultimately do prove to be alien, the revelation could actually work to the advantage of our species. I think that's probably true, although we're about to test it. Um, I guess um, if, if we look forward, I would put one little projection out there. I guess if I had to just... Uh, project the future, I would say we are entering a period, people, where this is going to sneak into the 2024 presidential election. I wouldn't have said that prior, but now we've got official reasons to be looking into UAP, and I don't think any responsible candidate could avoid being asked about it anymore. So I think things are going to change in the next couple of years. Yep, absolutely. And I think as Senator Marco Rubio has said, um, he actually said at his doorstop that they, they have information that is not currently public, publicly available either to congressmen, senators or the general public. And he said, he originally said 95% and then he corrected it and said 99% of the information that he was told in his classified briefing yesterday in the, in the Congress could be made public without compromising the security of America. Now, it's quite clear we are at an absolute turning point because for the first time, there is unanimity, bipartisan unanimity, that UAPs are a real bipartisan. flight safety, absolute flight safety and national security threat. And the, the Congress is not going to let this issue go. As, I, I really can't but, predict what's going to happen in coming months. But listen. Um, it's a very exciting time, especially because of what I know is going on behind the scenes. Because while all this has been happening, great work is being done by the oversight committees of Congress, the Armed Services Committee, the Senate Intelligence Committee. Key people are coming forward to give evidence. And so now uh, there is a schism. Now there is a schism between the US Air Force and the US Navy. And guess what? The White House knows it. 
As we wrap up, let me just ask you, um, because we've talked about, well, I'll just ask you, if you had to bet right now, what do you think the four objects represent? I think the four objects, well, firstly, the balloon, the spy balloon was definitely a Chinese you know what that spy is. balloon. Yep. The success of three objects that were shut down that are officially still unidentified, I think they'll turn out to be either some aerospace company's mislaid experiment or maybe a balloon sent across from Russia or China. I really don't think they're going to turn out to be anything at all anomalous. What is interesting, though, is that as a result of the Biden government's overreaction to the Chinese spy balloon incursion, where the president was getting an absolute bollocksing for not acting quickly enough on responding to that balloon, I think he gave a shoot down order. He told the Air Force that he was sick of their nonsense and he demanded that they start shooting down these objects, which is why we had this crazy situation where for the first time in history, NORAD's shooting down objects over American soil. That's never happened before. No. Now, that's a big red herring though. The big issue is that the Congress, the RO, the AARO, the All Domain, All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, and now the interagency, the political panel appointed by the White House, they are putting the Pentagon and the intelligence services under scrutiny like they've never done before. And I can tell you guys, for the people watching this at command level, and they are there, we know you're watching. For the people who are watching in the Pentagon and the intelligence community, if you think that we don't know what's going on, we do. We know a lot more than you realize, and we're far more coordinated than you realize. And if you are toying with the idea of coming forward and giving evidence, this is your time. You can either be an honorable servant of America, or you can be responsible for a criminal cover-up. It's your call. Yeah, it is. Um, listen, a couple of parting thoughts then. We really do have to get out of here. Um, here's the thing. Um, we're working on a show where we're going to review some of the history because in the history, all kinds of fun things can be found. Historically, there have been shoot down orders for what were UFOs back then. In fact, in 1952, there were multiple shoot down orders uh, and attempts, and there were lots of planes that were lost in the uh, in the 50s uh, by both uh, the U.S. and by the Soviet Union. So that historical show should be an eye opener. But we're doing our research on that. I just want to end with this, Ross. I think we are going to look back on this week, and I, I agree with you. They're probably not exotic or or uh, anomalous, as there, there's probably surveillance platforms. But I think we are going to look back on this week when we sort of woke up and got a little alarmed and then a little pissed off. And we're going to look at this week as the gateway drug to the truth. This is the thing that's going to get people started, and they're going to start looking for China and Russia and maybe Iran, and they're going to look for other places. But if you start pushing those rocks over, you're going to push one over, and it's going to be one that is non-human. And that's my prediction. We'll see if I'm right. Because you, all of you out there, you have the right to know as well as the need to know. We'll, have we'll catch more, you on the next show, everybody. We'll have more very, very soon. Thanks Good very, night, very Ross. much for watching. All right. See you later. Bye-bye.